Hey, welcome to part three of the IREX run cycle tutorial series. In this video, we are going to focus on animating the neck and the head, as well as make a few minor adjustments to our animation. So let's go ahead and get started. So in the last part, we worked on the legs and the hips, and we're sort of just moving down the body now. The first thing that I want to make sure that I change here is the actual follow attribute for the character's head. So if you'll notice, if I select the chest control and rotate this, you can see the head is going to follow along with that rotation. Now this is going to pose some problems for us when we actually go in here and want to animate the head because we're basically going to have to counter animate. The head is going to always take the rotation information from the chest. So if we're animating the head, we're always sort of fighting against that. So we want to make sure that we can simplify that. So the way we can do that is just by selecting the head, we can scroll down here to the follow attribute. And I'm just going to bring this to a value of zero, basically turning that off. And the pose is going to change slightly, but we can actually go ahead and tweak that in just a moment. And then I'm going to go into my graph editor and I want to scroll down and just find that follow attribute. And I'm going to make sure I change all these keyframes to a value of zero to turn off that follow. So what this does now, if I rotate the chest, you can see the head is not going to follow along. If the cog is moving up and down, the head is going to stay completely stationary. So it basically just locks off our head. And now we're able to animate the head completely independently of the rest of the body. Now, obviously, if we play this animation, it's not going to look great because the head is just completely locked off. But now we can actually go in here and begin animating it. So let's go ahead and select our head here. I'm going to go to frame zero and I'm going to select the translate Y channel here. And one thing that I want to tweak real quickly is the actual height of the head for this pose. So I'm going to select all of my keyframes and I'm actually going to drag it up. I feel like it's a little bit too low. So I'm just going to bring it up to around a value of negative five or negative six there. I just want to bring it up. I felt like it was a little bit too low. And this is something we can always tweak with an animation layer, which is something I do quite often is I'll come back to my animation. I'll see that the pose is not exactly how I want, so I can always tweak it. And then even later on, I can make large pose changes to this animation just by utilizing animation layers. So that's something we could definitely do later on. But for right now, I kind of like this height a little bit better. And now we're just gonna begin animating basically just the up and down of the neck and the head for right now. So let's go ahead and begin animating this. The first thing that I'm gonna do is just delete all of the keyframes between frame zero and frame 26. I actually really don't need these right now. I'm gonna go in here and add just brand new keyframes. And I'm really going to do this straight ahead. So I'm just going to frame through my animation and kind of figure out the animation that I want to create. So basically, as the body drops here, I want to have the head sort of lagging behind just a moment. So what I'm going to do is go to frame two here. And with my control curve selected, I'm just going to right click and choose insert keyframe. So that will just drop a keyframe down. And I'm going to drag this up. to kind of drag that head behind just a little bit. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and just zero out this value. We're close to zero, so we'll go ahead and just put that in there. All right, so now what I wanna do is go forward and I'm just gonna scrub through here and the head is going to need to be sort of lagging behind the body again. So I'm gonna to go to frame seven, select my control curve, insert a keyframe, and I'm gonna drag this down. And I'm gonna bring it down quite a bit here, maybe around a value of negative 29 or negative 30 here for the translate Y. So basically what we're doing is just adding a bit of drag and overlap to the head motion for this animation. Now, one thing that I wanna make sure that I do is that I don't wanna to go too overboard with this. I don't wanna have this neck feel like it's really floppy and just really overlappy, almost more like a tail motion. I wanna make sure that it still feels like there's muscle in here and he's still sort of focused in this run cycle. So we don't wanna to go too overboard with this, but we still wanna make sure that it has a nice feeling of weight to it on the head. So I think that works around frame seven. So what I'm gonna do is just jump forward to frame 13. I'm gonna add a keyframe. Since frame 13 is basically just the flipped version of frame zero, I'm just gonna copy the value on frame zero and I'm gonna paste it here for frame 13. All right, and then I'm gonna go forward two frames to frame 15, right click and choose insert keyframe. And we know that on frame two, we set it to a value of zero. So on frame 15, I'm gonna set that to a value of zero as well. And then we can adjust this tangent handle. All right, so I think that's working. Kind of see the overlap we're getting here with the up and down on the head. So now I'm gonna just scrub forward to frame 20, right click, choose insert keyframe. We'll copy the value on frame seven, and then we'll paste it here on frame 20. 
And then we'll just fix the tangent handle going into the keyframe on frame 26 and then out of the keyframe on frame zero to make sure that's a nice smooth curve there. And now let's go ahead and play this. And already you can see we're getting some nice sort of up and down motion on the head during this run. So we're adding a bit of weight to this. And now what we need to do is add some rotation. Right now, all it's doing is just moving up and down. So let's go ahead and pause this, go to frame zero. I'll select my rotate X channel there. And for the rotation X, I actually wanna change this a little bit as well. I'm gonna actually bring it up so that the dinosaur is sort of more looking downward. And I might actually just go ahead and zero this out. We can always change it later, but I think something like that will work just so that it's looking a little bit more sort of down and a little bit more straight in front of the actual character. So I think something like that should work. So just like we did before, I'm gonna get rid of all of these keyframes and I'm just gonna be adding brand new keyframes in there. So let's go ahead and just scrub forward. And again, we basically wanna have this sort of overlapping and dragging behind the body. So I'm gonna actually go to right around frame five, I'm gonna right click and choose insert keyframe. And I'm gonna drag this keyframe down to basically raise the rotation X so it's looking a bit more straight up. And animating something like the neck and the head is really great to do when you've got sort of the whole entire body kind of animated how you want. We have the cog animated, we have the chest animated. So this will allow us to more easily figure out what the actual head and neck needs to do based on the movement of the rest of the character. So just scrubbing forward here, you can see as the head drops down, there's a bit of rotation happening, bringing the head sort of upward, adding a bit more drag to it. And then I'm just gonna scrub forward here to frame 13, right click that curve, choose insert keyframe. And we know that on frame zero, we're at a value of zero. So I'm just gonna paste that here for frame 13 as well. And I'll go ahead and set this to an auto tangent to flatten out that tangent handle. And then now what I wanna do is go forward to frame 18, right click, choose insert keyframe. And then I'm just gonna copy this value that we have on frame five and paste it here. So already you can see by just adding some rotation along the X axis, it really sort of loosens up the head in the run cycle and we're getting some really nice motion in here. Now what we're gonna do is add a bit of animation to the neck controls and it's gonna be pretty similar. We're just going to add some sort of up and down on the neck to make sure that this feels nice and loose as well. So we're going to start with the base of the neck. Now, before we do that, we're actually just going to take the translate Y information that we created for the head and basically repurpose that, just make things a little bit faster. So I'm gonna select all those keyframes there, go to edit, copy, go to the base of my neck, go to translate Y. And what we're going to do is just select all the keyframes after frame zero there, delete those out, and then select the keyframe on frame zero. And we'll just go to edit, paste. And now we'll need to make just a few adjustments to this. What I'm gonna do is select all of my keyframes there, and I'm actually gonna drag this up just a little bit more so that the first keyframe starts around a value of negative one, just to make the transition between the spine and the neck just a little bit smoother there. And what we need to do now is just tweak some of the information that we have here. So the first thing that I wanna make sure that I do is tweak these keyframes on frame seven and the keyframe on frame 20. I feel like it's dropping down way too low, so I'm gonna bring this up quite a bit to right around there. And we can actually go ahead and hit auto tangent to flatten those tangent handles out. And I'll tweak this tangent handle here. Tweak that one there just a little bit. And for the keyframe on frame two and 15, I might actually bring it up just slightly. All right, that looks good. Just some nice subtle sort of up and down motion happening on the neck there. Let's go ahead and pause that. What we're gonna do is select all of these control curves here, go to edit, copy. And now we're just going to paste this for the middle control. So go to translate Y do just like we did before, paste it here on frame zero. And we might change the height of this just a little bit. We might actually bring it up just slightly there. All right, and then doing that, you can see that adds even sort of more looseness to the middle spine control. Now, what we're actually going to do here is we're just going to shift all of these keyframes forward one frame. So what that's going to do is basically add just a bit more sort of overlap between the first net control and the middle neck control just by shifting it forward one frame. And when you do that, of course, you wanna make sure you have your pre-infinity, post-infinity curve set to cycle. All right, and now let's go ahead and select the top neck control here. The one just before the head, we'll go to translate Y, delete all of those keyframes, paste that information again for this control, and we can adjust the height of this as well. We might bring it up just slightly. 
And this might be overall a little bit too much movement for this net control. So I might actually go and bring these keyframes down, bring this up just a little bit, just to create something a little bit more subtle. And now let's actually just try shifting these keyframes two frames forward. So it's basically just happening after the middle control. So we're just getting even more offset between all three of these controls. And you can see that adds just a bit more fleshiness to the spine as well as the head. And we can always tweak this later on, but I think right now that will work just for some basic up and down motion for the neck and the head. Now, the last thing I wanna take a look at in this part are the hips and the chest control. I wanna add a bit more side to side motion on both of these controls. So let's select the hip control. I'm gonna go into translate X. And the first thing I wanna do is just change the value of translate X. Right now it's currently zeroed out. So I'm gonna select all of my keyframes there. And since the right leg is the supporting leg, I'm gonna shift my hips over that leg which means I'm gonna drag this into the negative value there. And I think around a value of negative 10 or 11 there should work for us. And this will be a pretty simple curve that we're creating. All we're gonna do is jump to the keyframe on frame 13. And basically we wanna take this value here of the negative 10.99 and just take out that negative sign to make this positive. And then we're gonna delete all these keyframes here, except for the keyframe on frame zero, 13 and 26. And this will give us some very basic just side to side motion on the hips. So that just adds a bit of weight to those steps. And now what we're gonna do is something very similar to the chest control. We're not gonna have as much side to side, but we wanna make sure there's a little bit of side to side motion happening in the run cycle. It's really impossible for this to stay perfectly in a straight line. So we wanna make sure we get some side to side motion in there. So I'm gonna go to translate X here and I'm gonna select all of my keyframes and I'm just gonna shift this downward to basically shift that chest along the translate X over towards screen left. And I'll bring it down, definitely not as much as we did for the hips, but maybe around a value of negative two or so. And then what we wanna do is take the key on frame 13, select that, change this to a positive value. And we can delete this extra keyframe we have there. And this will give us some very basic side to side motion on the chest as well. All right, so now that we have some up and down in the neck and the head, we'll eventually add a little bit of side to side into this and get a little bit more detailed with the rotation on this animation for the head. But this gives us a good starting point. This is typically what I do. I get the overall rough movement in there. This head animation that we created gets us pretty far, but obviously we can slowly layer on more and more detail. But at this point, we can go ahead and move on to the other parts of our body that are not animated yet for this run cycle. So things like the arms, the hands, as well as the tail. So that's what we're going to move on to in the next part. So as always, if you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below and hopefully I'll see you in part four.